XOR gate, it should stop the system. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. I'm a genius. I'm better than Electrotech at everything now. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to make a video about this, aren't I? So contrary to what Apton may say, I'm actually pretty good at logic, and I've devised this little contraption here, and basically this is a red flickering light contraption, anti-Apton, proof, awesome, uh, I'm better than Apton, uh, design. And what sets my design apart from Apton and makes it 10 times better is that it actually works when you reload, usually, and I say usually because there may be a tiny, tiny little chance that it doesn't work just because of LT2 quirkiness, but like 90% of the time, it should work just fine. And that's a major W for my design because it means you don't have to click the button to restart the timer every single time you reload, which makes it a lot more practical. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into what materials you're going to need to build this design. The first thing you're going to want to do is place down your clock switch in the location where you want to build. I recommend placing the clock switch first as it is the largest component and you can kind of build everything else around it. Now grab your laser and laser receiver and point them so that they are facing directly into each other. I recommend just putting them right next to each other although you can also put them one or two studs back, it really doesn't matter. Next up you want to go ahead and grab your signal delay and place it somewhere near the input of the laser. Next up is your signal sustain, and I recommend placing it directly behind the delay just to save a wire, but really you can place any of the components in this build wherever you want as long as they're all wired up. Next up is the signal inverter, and you want to place this so that it comes out of the output of the laser receiver, and it inverts whatever that output is. Finally, you want to place down your AND gate right in front of everything just so that it's easy to reach. Again, you can really place this anywhere as long as you wire it all up correctly. And the output of the AND gate is where you're going to place down your flashing neon. Anyways, now for the wiring. You're going to want one wire going from one of the inputs of the AND gate to the output of the clock switch. And the other input of the AND gate is going to go straight from the output of the signal sustain, not the delay. Next up, you're going to want to wire the output of the signal delay into the laser activation button. From there, you're going to want to place a wire going from the input of the signal sustain into the output of the signal inverter. You should see that once you place that wire, everything starts to work. I did include an extra wire just in case you want to separate your signal sustain and delay. Now there are three main things that you can customize with this build, the first of which is obviously the clock. Again, all you have to do is press these buttons to adjust when in the day you want your clock switch to activate. Now for the signal sustain, increasing this will increase the amount of time that the light will stay on every cycle. And increasing the signal delay will increase the amount of delay it has between every time it pulsates. I do highly recommend that your signal sustain is at least set to 3 as below it and sometimes the signal might not be kept when you reload. However, if you have a really massive base, you may need to decrease this or just remove the signal sustain entirely in order for the device to work. And now to test if the device is working or not, simply make sure that it is running and then press your reload button. And once you are fully loaded in, which means you get the load success screen, you should come over to your light here and notice that it actually continues to work. And also as a disclaimer, the light isn't flashing right now, obviously, because, you know, it's not nighttime. But all that matters here is that this pulse is actually working. So yeah, now that you all know how to build this device, let's go and show Apton how to build it in his Let's Play series. I got all my axes back. Yay. Now I gotta watch you and criticize you. No, bro. Come on. Please. Bro, if I get to mock you, then it will make me feel Aww, better about my own logic dude. skills. So that's all I care about. Okay, I'm gonna I'm coming up so I can go no. criticize you real quick. Dude. I'm on my way to criticize your oh your terrible logic skills. Okay. Okay. Bro, that laser is so tiny. What is it gonna detect? <laughs> dude, it's not the the laser is simply 
a, a device of power, if you will. It's you a will. device of power. A device of power. Well, that's... <laughs> okay, let me actually explain how this device works. See, most logic items do not save their data when reloaded. For example, when a signal sustain is moved or reloaded, it does not keep whatever signal it initially had before being replaced. The only logic items that actually save their statuses are mechanical input devices. Thus, the only way this system could work logically was to use an input device that could be toggled on and off with a wire. Levers unfortunately do not work as they act a little weird when powered by anything other than a player. And that leaves us with only the laser. Now, there are two possibilities that could occur when the player reloads. A, the laser is off when reloading, or B, the laser is on. Let's run through both outcomes. If the laser is off, the receiver will have nothing to detect and thus the signal inverter will be powered, starting the pulse that will eventually make its way around to the laser and turn it on. If the laser is activated already, the receiver will detect it and shut off the signal inverter. However, since the signal inverter takes a moment to update, it will be able to pass a very short pulse through the system which will go around and disable the laser and then jumpstart the circuit. However, if the server is laggy, the inverse pulse will not be picked up, causing the circuit to fail. If this ever happens though, you can always jumpstart the circuit simply by pressing the button to activate the laser. Anyways, I hope that explained everything. Let's go back to some shenanigans. You know what? I what? don't understand what you mean, but that probably means you know what you're doing. Exactly. It should be working now. I mean, it's clearly oh. flashing. Okay, well... This light. Can you make it look be like better? Well, it first we bad. need to fully test it. Check it out, guys. Electro, dude, look. Made a non-functioning device. Bro, do you look notice how the signal inverter is on at the bottom and the wire is not? Um, oh, there we go. It oh, happened. It's working, dude. What happened? <laughs> we just like fast forward. Um. It's perfectly normal. Well, as you can see, it pulses all by itself, and if it was night, it would be on right now. But unfortunately, it's not. Now if I look, look, look. Oh, oh! Oh my gosh, it's working. Light. It's flashing. Yes. No, it's not. Yeah, yes. It is. Yes, it's flashing. Oh my gosh, look at that! It's working. It's beautiful. Wow, your vase looks so small compared to my massive door bridge. Yeah, it kind of does. Okay guys, that is going to be the end of the video. Uh, I spent a lot longer with Apton than I thought I would, to be honest, but I'm glad we got the thing built. He doesn't have to call me bad at logic anymore. But yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and this is going to be it for me, so goodbye.